Right, gonna start the greenhouse soon. Back still not great, but it's getting better. Little interesting fact for you about springs is I think we're gonna have quite a bit of rain on Monday. It's looking like a bit of a storm. And um, this will almost certainly start flowing. And you would think that after rain, if, the, if a spring starts flowing after it's rained, after a dry period, it's not actually a spring. Because uh, a spring should obviously spring all the time, it shouldn't be dependent on the rain. But what actually happens is, is the a spring is essentially a large mass of sand, gravel or some kind of um, uh, aggregate that has spaces between that's filled with water and the land on top of it has a weight to it obviously a, a, a huge huge weight to it so yeah, as a result of that weight the um, the land pushes down on this aggregate that is filled all the gaps between it are filled with water that pushing of it down say like clay soil which is what is here that that weight pushing on it forces water up through channels that are maybe channels of rock for example um, when it's very dry if it's not a particularly good channel or it's not a particularly uh, huge volume spring when it's dry the land gets significantly lighter so the weight isn't there to push the, the water up through the uh, rock so when it rains and we get you know millions and millions of litres of water on the land the land gets heavier and it pushes down on that water table and the water table pushes and the pressure of that pushes the water back up through the um, through the rock some springs are affected less by it um, because the weight is doesn't really change that much compared to the volume of the spring or compared to the ease that the water has to get out of the spring um, a little one like this seems to be affected quite a lot by it um, because it's not that high flow anyway. So you see, when it rains, it will uh, this will start to flow, and it will flow for you know weeks after it hasn't rained again. Um, that's my prediction anyway. It's just a sort of a rough. I'm not an expert at it, but that's sort of what I understand of springs, and that's why this currently isn't flowing. It's nothing to do with the it not raining. It's to do with the weight of the land pushing down on the water itself. So uh, considering this is called spring fed timber framed greenhouse I thought we should cover springs a little bit which is why I did that little uh, description there and uh, springs have been one of the main things really about this land that has enabled me to be successful with it um, because I've got water at basically very very little cost just the cost of a bit of pipe and some stones and things and I've got water I mean it's gone off a couple of times but that's only because I haven't tapped into other springs that are available on the land. Uh, one that I'll go and show you now which I discovered um, about six months after buying the land we were having a fire and uh, my friend uh, went off into the woods to look for a bit of firewood and he came back with uh, mud all the way up to his thighs and he'd gone right down into a into a mud pit. The cat's just turned up. Hey puss, you come to wreck the garden? Yeah, I know. Good girl. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So he came back with like mud up to his thighs, and he's like, I just fell into a into a bog. And I went and investigated, and uh, and it's uh, it's definitely a spring. I'll take it, take you to it and uh, show you because it's quite a good thing investigating springs because they're fascinating things. Come on, girl, do you want to go for a walk? I'm going to show everyone the springs. Good girl. Come on, Buzz. You coming? Come on. Come on. Good girl. You're showing off, big girl. And showing everyone your belly. That's well, not very ladylike, is it? Hey. So the lake is just there, and this is the spring water flow out of it. That little bit of flow there. So that's feeding into the lake from one end and coming out the other. And that's uh, yeah, that's that's the flow, low flow, low volume spring. But that's uh, spring water feeding into the main stream. I'm going to show you another one I found. Though. Okay, so here we are. We're literally just a little bit down from the uh, 
hydro dam actually and this area here that you can see this I believe is a spring see how wet it is um, there's mud debris leaf fall and stuff on top of it but I'll show you why I believe it to be a spring All right let's have a look here look if we rotate the camera just two meters away here this is relatively hard ground it's not tree roots it's just how the ground is I mean it's not rock hard we're in the woods but this is I can just get I mean if I really really try I'm just about drive my stick in that far this is two meters from that area we swing back round to here where I believe there is a spring um, I think you get my point that there is a spring and that's how you find them test for really soft spots I mean if we were to dig that out now fill it with gravel put a way of catching it we have another supply of water there a good one too might not be high volume but it only needs to trickle to get a thousand litres a day out of it yeah that's just a quick demo of how you go about finding springs you know I, I know every every inch of this bit of land I've walked it many times I take a stick people have had a go at me for carrying a stick saying I'm too young to take a stick I carry a stick so I can do things like that test the ground and as a result I know where all the water supplies are there's this one I think there's one more that I'm it's still questionable to me and uh, yeah I, I, I really know every inch of it and we have lots of water supplies the only thing that restricts me from tapping into them is just the expense of getting some pipe and the work involved in doing it so if one spring dries up I'm really only a, a day or two's work away from from tapping into other supplies of water and of course we've got spring water coming right down through the land anyway so it's going to take some serious dry conditions for us to not have any water it's definitely possible and uh, completely something that's always on my mind but at the moment we have multiple sources so yeah I thought I'd just cover springs a little bit considering the uh, title of the video is a uh, spring fed timber frame greenhouse to which it which it is and we've got quite a few on this bit of land to which we're very very blessed to have right let's get to work right greenhouse roof glazing is about to start we've got all the timbers machined that go on the outside and uh, yeah weather's not too bad showery but I think it'll be okay um, so yeah gonna go and put it's quite late in the day um, only could get started late in the day but gonna try and get a few bits of glass up yeah we'll see how it goes Good. Yeah. Down. 
つ。Tape's still on. This needs to come over a tiny little bit. Okay. Good, good. I think so. That one could do with being straightened out a bit. Oh, yeah, right. like that. That's it. Over the top. Maybe we take right. There we go. Right, I'm happy. Yeah? Straight down. That's it. Excellent. That didn't go too bad. No. <laughs> Flush with the other one. Flush with the other one. Hopefully it fits in there, does it? Feels like it. Does as well. It actually fits. Right, should be fixings up here. Yeah, you snug on the glass. Perfect, no. So I'm not sure it was that clear in the videos, but the ridge has a lip on it. Let me just take you up there. Just the uh, brightness for you, there we go. So the ridge has a step in it, which overlaps the glass, and the glass lines up perfectly with it. So all that time I spent measuring and planning paid off. Um, so there, there we go. Glass sits under that step, and it accounts for the tape and everything. So that's how that's working.
We have to put this little uh, this little step in all of the battening timbers that go and hold the windows on from the outside. And this is because the glass is overlapped. This step is the thickness of the glass. Just cut the bulk of it out on the table saw. Um, but the table saw can't get the entire thickness. So I ripped it off with the band saw, just plain and smooth. This is green timber. So it's uh, going to crack and move quite a bit anyway. It's not a too accurate process. It's just so that the um, glass and everything all sits exactly as it should because of that step in the glass where they overlap. If we didn't take this step out, there'd be a big bulge in the middle. Dangerous this is. <laughs> I was gonna say which one are you talking exactly, about? Exactly, yeah. Uh, Flexibility. Yeah. It's like a putty thing. Yeah, no, it's not like a uh, we want it a couple of mil over from that tin's edge. So not that. Push it up against, tight against the bridge, yep. lay it down. Well tight. Where you want to go. I'm, I'm good, good yep. for you. Me too, yeah. Stick it down. For it? Ready. Won't be able to clamp it this time. No, I can keep hold of it. Keep hold we... of it and I'll get a pile in it. We've got a mark to it for the line. Top We've got line. one there, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, lower in. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy. Yep. Right, are you ready? Ready. Splinter. Splinter went straight in there. Nice. We can pull back out again. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there we go, one side is glazed and we've got a few of the um, buttons that hold it all down up and the tape and everything on. Uh, go way better than I thought it was going to go, put a lot of thought into it, made this little contraption for access and everything and it's all just worked absolutely perfectly which is a big surprise because I thought it would be a bit more of a faff than it is. And no, it's working great so we'll uh, carry on tomorrow, I reckon we'll get that done tomorrow then we move on to the other side. So really pleased. Hey everyone, so it's a pretty miserable day out, chucking it down with rain out, um, so it's going to be a workshop day. I think I'm just going to do a load of the machining that needs doing on all the bits of wood for uh, the rest of that whole side. So we just have to nip out, get a few measurements and then get all the wood prepared in here. Uh, lots of power coming in, hydro's back on which is kind of cool, it's been on for the last few days because we had quite a bit of rain. We're at 450 watts there, I don't know if you can see that but yeah. So we've got plenty of power and everything. Uh, yeah, it's gone cold and wet, so uh, workshop day for sure. I'll show you what I'm up to. So at the moment I'm just making these little uh, little hangers. They're little like end stops. They're just going to, where the glass sits on the overhang, um, they've just got to cut out the glass sits in there and they just screw to the fascia and they just support the end of the glass in case the glass was going to try and slide down after the tape's knackered. Um, so yeah, they're just like mechanical end stops for the glass. Um, yeah, so I'm just making them. Then we're going to machine up all the uh, all the timbers for 
the rest of the greenhouse basically to use up some of this hydroelectric power. Right, weather's sort of improved a little bit, so we're gonna get on. Um, glass is a bit wet, so instead of sticking the tape to the glass, we're sticking the tape to the bits of wood, which we just machined, which I showed. And so yeah, we've only got four more bits to get on. This side will be done, so let's uh, get to it, see if we can get this side done today. And we'll put on the pieces that go on the ends uh, that cap off the ends of the glass. All right, it's uh, evening and uh, the rain's sort of stopped. We got rained off earlier. We got this side done though. Um, so I'm gonna just fit some of these uh, end stops made this morning. I'm just gonna use a bit of wood as a spacer. I think it'll look quite consistent if I just say use that piece of wood and then put that there. And say that was on there. That went there, would that look alright? I think it would. The next day, we got this done yesterday. Uh, weather's a bit wet, but I'm hoping to get the whole other side done today. I thought I'd just explain my uh, little access contraption I made. Um, I put quite a lot of thought into that uh, to make it so it's quite lightweight. So it's got carpet on the bottom and quite a big surface area, and it sits on the edge of the glass there where it's supported by the tape. It's toughened glass, so that's okay. Um, and the carpet on it, but then at the top it sits on the ridge and it actually doesn't touch the glass at all all the way down and um, because it's got the two side pieces which are quite um, thick they actually take my full weight so the my weight isn't actually hitting on the glass uh, I made that obviously because uh, if anything goes wrong we'd smash a panel or whatever I need to be able to access it from the outside and that little contraption allows me to do it I say there's quite a lot of thought went into that because we had to be able to access it from the outside to put all this um, buttoning on or whatever you're going to call it, window trims um, so yeah, it's working really well, really really pleased like it was, it took longer to think about how to do this than to actually do it which is awesome the uh, spring's back working again so we've had quite a bit of rain and as you can see it's flowing, it's going through the overflow and uh, yeah, so that should stay on now for quite a while um, it's rained a lot overnight you can see half wet frame, half dry frame, and uh, no leaks, which is awesome and surprising. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it wouldn't really matter too much if there was a leak um, because it's a greenhouse, but there isn't any. So yeah, all that planning and time thinking about it has paid off, and it really looks good from under here. Like I'm so pleased. It looks like a proper greenhouse. Up. Right, well it's the uh, end of the day, just had a clear up. Uh, we did quite well today, we got all the glass in and three of the wooden strips. We could probably uh, get it finished today if uh, if we could be bothered, but it's 
pretty hot and humid out and it's Friday night it's already like five o'clock so we're gonna just finish that another day yes yeah, come along really well a lot of you probably noticing that the uh, uh, window joints are staggered over that's because I made a mistake when I ordered the glass I had to order the glass preemptively quite a long time ago and I got the size by, out by about 20 millimeters so I've had to push all the bits of glass over because to compensate for that they fit but they don't all line up in the center it's just a mistake but they fit so it's okay anyway we'll carry on and see if we can finish it tomorrow Hey everyone, so uh, we got the roof done as you can see from in the pictures um, We couldn't get a lot of footage of finishing it on, on that side because it got pretty wet and windy out uh, but We pushed on, got it done um, Really pleased how it turned out uh, The glass was slightly too big as I said I ordered it a bit wrong um, But it, we got it to fit and it actually went really smooth, way smoother than I, th I thought it was going to go And it's up and done So in the next video I'm going to make uh, wooden guttering uh, to close off these gaps on the edges um, as you can see the gap kind of there uh, we'll close those off and catch the water and we'll glaze the ends and I'll be starting doing that tomorrow okay hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching what you doing? hello hello